Okay, so this is day 17 of the HMI system, or the 30-day uh, project that we're doing for servo motion, uh, integrated servo motion. And this would be more working on the HMI side of things uh, on, in this the current days. And so if, if you haven't seen the other videos where we, we built the AC, ACD file, uh, you're more welcome to check out the prior videos. I'll have them in the show notes below. Um, probably not from day one, but... Um, I uh, definitely will have you know enough videos there to, to see, and you can kind of backtrack and go if you want to and look at that. So, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into some of the other elements. Um, so, what I've done is there's a Rockwell uh, de der derived um, screen that they have, and basically this is a screen that you can pull off. Um, you can pull off their knowledge base system. This screen has BBA code behind it, um, and I want to kind of go through it too, um, because if you, if I pulled it up right now, and so I, I've already put it in, got it working, and um, and I sh you know I'll show you how in a minute, but I just to show you that it is working, I'll go ahead and uh, start it. It shows that the primary server is the local host is active. The uh, server or the FT directory I'm sorry is active it shows that the HMI server is active it has no secondary because we're not specifying a secondary and the uh, alarms and events factory talk alarms and events is uh, is active right now so it also shows that the server uh, status which is the application name you know, of what we have and again it shows that it's supported on the versions that it is so let's go through real quick and note um, how I got this running. So again, I got this from the knowledge base. So it's free and open for everybody to get. It's not a special screen that, that you know we somehow made or come up with. Uh, but it does have VBA code behind it. Now, there's some constants in here than the VBA code that you need to be aware of. Now, I say this because, um, and this, again, shows you the uh, the article that I got it off of. So, Factory Talk article, uh, it's right it's right there. When it was made, uh, who it was made by, again, it, this is fully supported by Rockwell. Um, this is supported with Factory Talk 6 and higher. Uh, so, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, now, I won't say that the, some of the higher versions, like 9 or something like that, 8 or 9, it doesn't slightly change, or maybe there's some things that you need to change in it, but this will, as far as I know, this works on, on all of them. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and go through this a little bit. There's some constants in here, right? So, you have uh, these things that the user must configure, right? Okay, so you have to put in your, your application name, your server name. You have to put in the area, which our area is basically straight off uh, the system. Then you have to put your RS Links Enterprise, and then your data, like so your name of your area. So in our case, we're using an area, we're using RS Links. And then down in the uh, FT directory, or the FT uh, Alarms and Events system, we want to point our server, and again to the alarms and events and right here you want to indicate how many servers you're using if you're using a redundant system you change that to two um, and in my case I'm using that uh, a single system I, so I'm not I'm not gonna have to uh, change that if you were to open it up and use two systems then you need to come down here and fill out the information for the second system so let's see two Let's back that up. I didn't mean to. Okay, so two. You would need to come in here and fill out the information for this this side of the system. All right. If you did not fill that out, it wouldn't wouldn't know what what's what. Um, wouldn't know exactly what to pull up or anything of that nature. So, I have. Uh, in my case, I'm only using one server. This is a single system, a small solution. It's not a redundant system. Uh, what they call a medium solution system is a redundant. All right, so you have two systems. You have two servers at a certain level and, and set, set, set up a certain way. We won't get into that. It's a little bit you know, out of the spectrum of, of what we're doing. 
but the main pro main thing I want to talk about is setting the constants in the screen and how to use them. So make sure that you note that in your application, your application server name, right? That's what I put right here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so that's what I put right here, and then I come in and put that the um, the drop down what really that what the way that looks is the drop down in the, the the way that the screens are the way the uh the file path is so the next thing is the area is the data server so the area if you look at the area right when it asks the data name the data area name you put your data server right that because obviously and you see, you see what I'm talking about with the file, or basically the file path. So it's, you know, it, it, you, you have to put that in there to get, the, you can't just put data server in there. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So it drops down one, and then you have your instance, right? So we have our file. So if we were to place our, our HMI server in the same, like make a new area, we would have to specify the area of that too. So we would have had a slash area whatever um, but in this instance again we're using data server so slash to break down to the next level and then data server okay so once we're at the data server level right then we want to, to break down and show that what rs links were in right so if we were to name our rs links something rs links enterprise something different than rs links enterprise we needed we would need to do that we would need to put that name in here. Um, generally speaking, I don't change that. I mean, you're more than welcome to, but I don't change the name of my RS Links Enterprise because it's basically the same for everyone, every server. So, um, again, this is just, you know, where I got the data, where to put it in. The factory talk alarms and events, it's looking for the HMI system that you're, you're making it all under. So, let me show you what I'm talking about. So the HMI system that you're making it under is where your factory talk alarms and events would be. So um, again, that kind of breaks down to um, things that are happening down in the system, uh, but just know that that's where that's where you get that. So going through the the constants of this uh, factory talk or this Rockwell derived. Um, screen with the, uh, with the VBA code. Uh, just setting the constants, that's how you set them. So that's basically all you need to set. And then you need to come down here to um, make sure if you're using a secondary secondary server that you put your data in for that too. Um, but make, and I guess right here is where, where it's really important. If you're only using one, just put one in. If you're using two, put two in. So if I put two, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I put to and then I save it, and then I go back up here, and let me pull that back up, and I got to run it, so it knows it still can't. There's nothing specified here. Uh, but what it does is it makes the VBA code work that, that just that much harder. Um, so you really don't want to do that. So let's just close that. Um, open the VBA code again. And again, if you don't know how to do that, click on the box. Right click. VBA. Select VBA code. It's going to come up to the bottom of the screen. You want to go to the very top. <clears throat> That's where the constants are going to be. At that point, uh, I want to put, you know, the thing that I changed, which is the servers num uh, na uh, number of servers used. Change that back. So we change that back. It always hit save when you're done. You can just X out if you if you want to. But if you X out, make sure you on the screen before you close the screen, you hit save up here. I was doing the, basically doing the same thing. So that's how I got my screens to work. Um, the screen to work right here uh, as far as being able to be used um, and going through and, and you know basically feeding the system uh, information 
Now, I guess if we did not have the system fed with the correct information, then it would not show up anything in here. It wouldn't point to the correct. So let's let's show that. Let's just go through and, and show that. And I don't want to you know stay on this too long, dig into it. But you know we've wasted more ten minutes. Not wasted, but we we've kind of ate up more ten minutes. So uh, say if I I change this name to new server. I don't know. I mean something that didn't apply, right? We hit save. So <clears throat> you see that it says it's not found. So this, the VBA code is smart enough to know that you don't have the system, you don't have the correct information in here. So when you get this from Rockwell, when you get that off that article, so if you go back and you look, if you get this off this article right here, if you put in the wrong information in here, that note, it will just look like this, right? It will say server not found, and it will do the same thing for any element that you have that is not correct. So there's no no harm done, right? You just go in and, and go in and uh, open it up in the VBA code again. Right click, open VBA code. We already have it open, so um, I just wanted to show an illustration of what it would look like. So I'm going to put my system back the way it was. So copy, let's paste. Okay, and again, save it. Come back up to the screen, run it, and it's back working. So that's basically how you set that screen up. Um, you really shouldn't have to play with the, the rest of the VBA code. Um, and like I said, it's pretty robust. Something that Rockwell derived, uh, basically made for us, and it does work. It works really well. Um, so, you know, just to kind of kind of show, uh, you know, exactly what's going on and, and stuff of that nature. And what we'll do so being that we have this uh, this new screen, we have the new screen active, so we know it works because we did a test right here in the test mode, right? <clears throat> we want to come back into our header bar. And our header, <coughs> excuse me, in our header we want to make a uh, small button. So let's do a push button. Uh, Yeah, let's do that. Let's do a push button. And we'll do this. And then what we'll do in the actions is we'll have this go to navigation. And then we'll basically display. And in this display, we'll, we want to come into our area. We want to make sure that we have our area specified to our server level come down and go to the screen we want to pull up and hit finish now that's going to pull up the screen um, you know once it's pressed uh, now what I want to do with this is open I want to change the visibility so in this instance I want to make it okay transparent so make it transparent and then we come in here to save so what we've done is we we've, we've made a button on top of this so that it will pop up and show the server status um, show the server and, and uh, everything about it so we can tell it how healthy the system is while the client is still running so as the system's running and the main main focus is is you know you don't have to stop the system. You don't have to go in the back plane of, of uh, basically go in the back plane of your system up here and right click or anything and, and look at the server status. This screen that I'm, I'm showing you right now, and I'll, I'll pull it back up. This screen that I'm showing you right now, it actually gives you the same information if you were to pull up the server status, right? The server I'm currently using is right here. It's active, right? The Lynx Enterprise, 
right? So server status, again, same thing. The Lynx Enterprise showing active. So this is the very same thing that it makes it where you don't have to go into the back plane of Factory Talk Studio just to be able to see what's going on. You can check the full health of the system from the front end of the system, or from the front end of the HMI. And like I said, make it more user friendly for you. Um, you know, build the, build the stuff how you need it. Um, and uh, that's basically what I wanted to show on this video. So now this will show all the elements fully tied in with the header bar, uh, fully done, working. And what we'll do on the very next um, the video. So what we'll do is we'll make the client. We'll start testing some of this stuff. Uh, we'll show exactly how everything's you know done, and then you know tie tie everything together. And then we'll, we'll after that the day after that we'll probably build the screen for the uh, the system starts and stuff of that nature. Okay, so uh, just to wrap this up, I hope you got you know a good bit of a value out of um, you know that screen that I should just showed you and where to get it if you needed to and the simple elements of the uh, VBA code. You don't have to even be a VBA programmer to be able to use this. All you got to know is your information on what you're building. That's simple. You know, so it's not didn't really take too much to it. They built it for us. Something for us to use, good tool. Um, hopefully you got some good value out of it. So um, again, I just want to conclude this uh, video and wrap this one up. If uh, if you haven't seen some of the other ones, you know, like I said, they'll be in the show notes below. And again, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you, uh, your support. And we're going to wrap this one up. So I'll see you tomorrow. And, and uh, hopefully, you know, if you choose to, to stay with us, this 30-day uh, process, I hope you, hope you are. So again, I appreciate your support and everything with the, with the channel. So thank you.